Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have card number three in my Halloween series for 2018, and this one features a stamp set called Haunted House by Art Impressions. This is a tri-fold stamp set, and so I've kept all the packaging, and I will keep referring back to that packaging quite frequently as we are making this card. So to start, we're going to want to have a piece of cardstock that measures 5 inches by 11 inches, and I'm using some Strathmore 140-pound watercolor paper. And then we're going to score that in even one-third sections, so that each section is going to measure 3 and 5 eighths inches. But don't fold it yet because we don't want those fold lines quite in there. It might make stamping a little bit difficult later. So I'm just scoring that. I noticed that my cardstock has a little bit of a smudge on it, so I'm gonna use my mono sand eraser to get that off of there before I start doing any stamping. So now we're actually ready to do some stamping, and I'm gonna use my stamp platform just in case I need to re-ink my image. But according to the directions, we wanna center, ink, and stamp the large background, which is the Haunted Mansion, in the center section of the card, approximately 1 of an inch from the top. So I'm going to put that on my platform, and because this is watercolor paper and I plan to do watercoloring, I'm going to use my VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp my image. And I will stamp it more than once, which is where the stamp positioner comes in very handy. You don't need one of these, but in my case it's actually very handy because I tend to not stamp right away very well. So next we're going to turn our card over and ink and stamp the left foreground image, which will be the signpost on the right panel next to the score line, which is and then we're going to have that one and a half inches from the top of the card. So I am using my stamp platform side to kind of measure about an inch and a half away from the top and right along that score line. And once again, using that VersaMark Onyx Black Ink, I am stamping my image a couple of times to make sure that it's good and crisp. Now I have turned my stamp platform and I'm going to ink and stamp the right foreground image, which is the cat and the pumpkins on the left panel, next to the score line, about an inch and a quarter from the top of the card. And I'm going to use the same ink once again and stamp my image a couple times. And then eventually we'll start seeing this come together. Now I'm just going to heat set that ink. That is an ink that typically stays wet for a little bit. And if I had been thinking, I would have done it right away after each stamped image because I did get a little bit of smudging from here and you know, here and there on different places. So I'm just going to heat set that. And I'm actually going to use the packaging as a reference for my coloring. So to color my images, I'm going to use my Magello Mission Gold watercolors. This is the set of 36. I will have that listed down below if that's something you're interested in. And I'm using a black velvet silver brush. And this is the number four. This is a fairly intricate image, so I figured this, this paintbrush would actually work out really nicely. And you will see me on occasion dip back and forth uh, onto my right hand side, and that's where I'm getting my water. And so I'm going to pan out and show you what I use. I've done this before, I've showed you before, but I'm going to show you what I am using to get my water. So this is my rinse well. It has a little reservoir up top that holds the water like a water bottle, and then it pushes into the reservoir down below. And then all I'd have to do is press that button and it will get rid of the nasty water and bring clear water back in. So that's what I use rather than a couple cups of water. And so back to painting. I am just um, not really doing a whole lot of detail since this is a very detailed image. You don't need to go crazy with your detail. I am just putting down a light wash of color to start and then I will assess whether or not I need to add shadowing later on. But because this is such a detailed image, I don't feel it's necessary to go too crazy with my shadowing. I will add a little bit on the sides just where the paneling of the house is, but I don't do a lot. And I'm just going back and forth. I really like these Magello Mission Gold watercolors. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive for the quality that you get, but they do the job really well. So while I'm doing a little bit of this coloring, I am just going to explain um, a little bit about what happened this weekend. So I ended up getting a cold and it didn't really come in full force until yesterday, so that's why I sound a little bit scratchy. But this weekend, I think I had mentioned that we were planning to do a little bit of a fundraiser for my daughter's volleyball team. Uh, they're headed to state here very soon and you know we needed to raise a little bit of money in order to be able to send our coaches because we're a private organization so we needed to be able to send our coaches and get the team registered so we had a fundraiser so several of the moms got together and um, 
pooled their resources and we were able to do this fundraiser. So I was able to bring out my cards. I don't typically sell them unless somebody asks me, hey, I really like that card. Can I buy that? I am a terrible salesperson. (laughs) Anybody who knows me or has tried to buy something from me before can tell you that I'm a terrible salesperson. Um, So I brought actually quite a few cards. It's funny. I thought that maybe I only had about, I don't know, 50 cards. Turns out I had over 180 cards. (laughs) I was shocked at how many cards I actually had. Um, Well, now I flipped the image over just to kind of go back to the card. I flipped the image over after I heat set the image on the back, and now I'm just coloring back and forth on the two panels. All right, so back to our weekend. So I had over 180 cards to sell, and I was amazed actually at how many people came in and were all about the handmade cards. So we did end up selling over 100 plus cards. I'd have to actually go back and count again. Uh, and we, I, my, on my part, I think we raised a pretty decent amount of money. So um, I don't know how the other ladies did with what they were selling. Because there was fudge and there were bags and there were clothes and things like that. And, um, but I, I was very excited. But now... I don't have a lot of cards left. I am going to have to like restock my stash. I have no more birthday cards. I am almost completely out of thank you cards. Um, miss you, uh, female or feminine like mom cards. I had no masculine cards. So I've got some work to do. I've got to restock my stash. But anyway, I thought you guys might be interested to know how that, that did. So if you stockpile cards, apparently like I do, Uh, Maybe you can find some outlets on how you could possibly sell those. Uh, If you have any ideas, you know, send them my way because I'd I'd love to hear those as well. Uh, I don't know, there's farmer's markets and Etsy and things like that, but this was a very good fundraiser. So if that's something you guys are interested in, I thought this worked out really well. People love the handmade cards. All right, so back to my card. Um, I'm just painting... Very simple images, trying to find little pops of color, which is why I do end up using the blue and the sky background, because if you know, if you just go with the oranges and the browns and the blacks, it's a fairly subdued card, well, very subdued card with, you know, not a lot of color. And, um, you know, it definitely needs a little bit more. So I, of course, put down my first light wash. And then once things dried, like I'm going back in now, and I'm adding a little bit of shadowing to that stone wall. And... Now I'll start putting in some of the grass, which, you know, I'm using a yellow because if it's fall in most places, the grass will be, you know, a little bit more of a brown color. Uh, Unless you live here in El Paso, we, if you do happen to have grass, it's going to be green (laughs) because, because it's still pretty warm here. Um, But now I'm going on to the sky and I'm not going all the way to the side as you will see, because eventually I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to go around that image. So I'm just going to keep coloring the sky. That's the last part. And I'm sorry that sometimes this has been a little bit off screen. Um, But yeah, and then we will end up going back to the packaging to figure out how we've got to cut that down. Uh, But I'm going to heat set this before we actually go on to the cutting. All right, so let's go back to the packaging and read what it says to do next. So next, after we've colored the images, we're going to begin three-fourths of an inch from the bottom of the card, and we're going to cut around the signpost and up the score line to the top of the card. Beginning one and three-fourths inches from the side of the card, repeat with the cats and the pumpkins cutting up the score line. Now, I decided, you know, I would use a bit of a border so that blue would show, and then I'm not actually going to cut up the score line just yet. And the reason for this is because I want it to be precise. So I'm just going to cut right to the score line and then I'm going to use a paper trimmer to do the rest. I will sort of trim along the side there because I want to, but I don't score, I don't cut on the score line when I start cutting around the cat and the tree and the pumpkins and stuff. So I'm just leaving a bit of a border and then I will trim that down and I'm going to grab my Fiskars wire cutter. So it's got, um, a wire in there to show you exactly where your paper or your your blade is going to go. So I use that as a guide and then I'm going to trim along that score line right where that wire is. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment on the inside after I've scored these lines so you'll get an idea of how this actually looks. It's so cute! Oh, These are so fun too. 
it's sort of like an interactive card without having any real interaction. And so now I've got that back in my stamp platform and I'm going to stick my sentiment down and stamp that using that same Versafine Onyx Black ink. And then I'm going to heat set that once I have stamped that so that way I don't get any ink transfer onto the side. And that will finish off the card. So if you liked it, hit the like button. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And as always, guys, I, I do appreciate you stopping by.